Okay, my friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University, and most of you are aware that I discovered mud fossils approximately 10 years ago, and I've investigated them fully vetted in every single way. CAT scans, DNA, specimens, chemistry, the whole nine yards, and they're still refused by academia. Now, I have so I've been going back to some of the earliest texts to see what makes sense now that I have mud fossil eyes and I can see what the earth is literally constructed of and here is what metamorphosis is one of the first books written by Ovid the details the history of creation which we are going to be doing as a series all the way up through his books and he's got a ton of them and we're going to go through each one of them and we're going to investigate them see if anything makes sense and it does he says, I intend, right in his first statement, he says, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. Giants really are the surface of the earth. Titans, Olympians, monsters. Let's take it on. Okay, my wonderful friends, as you know, my frustration level has been on extended upper limits lately. Why? Well, I keep getting this all the time. People send me, this guy says, you know, there's a, you were mentioned about something, and he says, I'll find the, the, the post for you. And um, he says, they took it down. Two, they've been posted for two years about Sasquatch and Bigfoots and all this. One mention of Roger Spur, no D in Roger, by the way, and mud fossils, and boom, they took it down. It means something's wrong. The context of the post was a government employee apparently had written to them and said he wrote to howtohuntfacts.com. He claimed that the government are actively hiding the research and they don't like talk about giants. And that was four days ago he put it up and the video is gone. They've been posting about Bigfoot for two years. It, it, I have the evidence and they don't like that. They don't like to have evidence because evidence destroys the mystery that makes it just nonsense. Once you come out of the nonsense realm, it gets a little scary. Okay, my friends, uh, I don't know who has a stake in what and who is good and who is bad and if there is any conspiracies or whatnot going on about these giants, but this is what the original writing was about and it, it talks about the lust for material wealth and how that destroyed everything. It talks about iron and then gold being more dangerous than iron because gold was sought after. It, it was something that couldn't be destroyed it, it, and you could use it to, to tender. You could use it to, to, to use it for transactions because it was so solid and, 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 and you, you couldn't fake it. Now Listen to this. This is this is stunning stuff, man. This is Ovid, and his first words in this this epic is, "I am going to talk about people or creatures being turned into the landscape by the gods." Now listen to this. As a further incitement to wickedness, now dangerous iron and gold, more dangerous even than iron, had emerged. Grim war appeared. Who uses both his in his battles and brand it and brandish his clashing weapons in hands be spattered with slaughter men throve on their thefts no guest was safe from his hosts no father secure with his daughter's husband love between brothers was found but seldom men and their wives would long for each other's demise wicked stepmothers brewed their potions of deadly wolfsbane sons would cast their father's horoscopes prematurely all duty to gods and the men lay vanquished, and justice the maiden was last of the heavenly throng to abandon the blood-drenched earth. No more justice. The upper air was not to be left in greater peace than the earth below. The story goes that the giants aspired to the throne of heaven and built a path to the stars on high by piling mountain on mountain. That sounds to me like the, the story about Babylon. Then it was that almighty Jupiter launched his lightning bolts to shatter Olympus, 
and shook Mount Pelion down from its base on the ridges of Asa. When, crushed by the mass they had raised, those fearsome bodies lay prostrate, Mother Earth, as the story continues, now steeped and drenched in the blood of her offspring, gave fresh life to the seething liquid. That seething liquid is mud and clay. That is the decomposed, eroded flesh of giant creatures. Blood sacrifice, to me, is, the, is what they originally were talking about, soaking the earth with blood so that the plants could grow. That's the only thing plants grow from, is, is blood and, and um, bone. I have, uh, I use those for my plant food, <laughs> blood meal and bone meal. Now here goes, offsprings gave fresh life to the seething liquid, okay? So the blood gave fresh life. Unwilling that all the fruits of her womb should be lost and forgotten, she turned their blood into human form, but the new race also looked on the gods with contempt. Their passionate lust for ferocious violence and slaughter prevailed. You'd have known they were born of blood. That's where I'm going to leave this for today. We're going to be going through the entire story of the history of our Earth. From written by the earliest writers, Ovid was the first one to really congeal all of the original sources that talked about these monsters. I mean, they had octopus feet and wings and uh, they were giants miles tall and dragons and all kinds of creatures. It was like this planet was a factory for, for genetic experimentation. I, I, I don't know what else to say. There's a lot to look into, but let's start right from the beginning. Ovid is the guy. So I'm going to leave it here for today, but giants need to be spoken of, and my research needs to be seen, and we need to see the research I've done about the muon and the particles of light that are being, being dismissed because of my other research. I believe almost all of my research is being destroyed because I am being truthful about what I'm finding. If I was, if I would just wanted to glass over it and, and hide and just say a little snip here and a snip there was true, maybe they'd allow it. But under these circumstances, it's just not being allowed. Okay, I guess I'll leave it at this. People are paying attention. This is called the future of reasoning. People don't reason correctly. They don't understand. They dismiss and demean and depress information. So the future of reasoning, what is it? This is Vsauce. Very, very, very. You got 16, 17 million subscribers. And 3 million hits in a couple of days. And he's talking about we've lost the ability to reason. So now we have to take in account of what we actually see, not something that we can just dismiss out of hand. And that has become what academia is all about, is a system of dismissal. Need to change that right now.